Well, here we go. Good afternoon. I'm not sure quite how this picture is looking. I turned it sideways today just so you could see what's going on. A little different spot. But uh, welcome. Day 12 in uh, reading Luke in Advent. So being day 12, we're going to read chapter 12. For those of you that have been following along, we did chapter 11 yesterday. Chapter 11 was uh, had some interesting... Uh, messages in it we we turned read about the uh, returning of the unclean spirit and and it talked about true blessedness we also saw jesus uh, teach the lord's prayer to his disciples and to us and then we also saw him have a run-in with the pharisees and the teachers of the law you know the teachers of the law uh, the lawyers um they put so many burdens on the people that that they made their lives extremely difficult and hard to follow. And, and, and Jesus uh, gave us a bunch of woes, and particularly woes be unto them. But anyway, we're going to continue today now with chapter 12. In the meantime, when so many thousands of people had gathered together that they were trampling one another, he began to say to his disciples first, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in a private rooms shall be proclaimed from the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are more valuable than many sparrows. And I tell you, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man shall also acknowledge before the angels of God. But the one who denies me before men will be, not be denied before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not be anxious about how you should defend yourselves or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me ju judge arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetedness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, A land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grains and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. And he said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they reap neither reap nor sow. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life. If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, 
Even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, and do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. Be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, you are telling me, you are telling this parable for us, or for all. And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom his master will set over his household to give him their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what des did deserve what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens, you hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present times? And why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? As you go with your accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him on the way, lest he drag you to the judge. And the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer put you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny. Well, that concludes chapter 12. Once again, there's so much going on in here. But one of the big things is Jesus telling us not to be afraid, not to fear, telling us 
how much we are worth. We are worth more than the sparrows. One of my favorite lines of scripture that I use repeatedly, and my children will probably get angry with me for this if they hear it, is that, that famous line, do not be anxious about anything. Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? We need to trust God. We need to have faith in God. All our worrying doesn't do anything. If we spent as much time praying as we spent worrying, I think you would find life a lot more comfortable and a lot less stressful. So my friends, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, prayer and supplication. Pray to the Lord. He hears our prayers. He answers our prayers. Trust in him always. Well, that's enough for today. And actually, as warm as it is, my fingers are starting to get cold. So I think I'm going to close it off here. And we will see you tomorrow for day 13 of reading Luke in Advent. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, seeing you all soon. And I look forward to uh, our video tomorrow. So thank you once again. Um, be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. Be kind. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. God bless.